Hi everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Age Origins Awakening. Possibly for the last time. Let's go kill the mother! So I've done my best to record all of the Dragon Age Awakening codex entries, but there were four that I couldn't get. Now, one of them I probably just missed, I had a good look for and couldn't find it. One of them I couldn't find a location for, so I've almost certainly missed it. But the other two, there is no reason why I can't have them. And I downloaded four different completed save games. None of them had the entries either. So I don't know if it's something to do with my install or a bug in the game as a whole. I don't know. But one of them is probably the most important codex in the game. So I'm going to stick them in here, even if it's a bit amateur. Uh, this is all credit to Dragon Age Wiki. Hopefully it's accurate enough. A list of instructions. Alana, the warriors say we must leave Kalharol for Orzammar. Here are my things to pack. 1. I need my gowns. If the trunks can't hold them all, leave the old rose one with the pearl buttons. And perhaps the midnight blue. 2. All my jewels. I don't know when we're coming back, so I'd like to have them with me. 3. At least a week's worth of food, including 10 bottles of wine, 10 bottles of ale, and 30 bottles of water from the spring. Orzammar is a dirty city teeming with surfaces and castless. I dread to drink its foul water. 4. The children will need all their toys. 5. And their beds. Make sure they bring the beds. 6. On a second thought, bring ours as well, and at least three changes of bedclothes. I don't know where they'll house us. I hear Orzammar's diamond quarter is smaller than House Herol's dining room. Ugh, just thinking about it makes me ill. Christoph's note. These darkspawn act like no pack I've seen, employing misdirection to keep their location secret. When an archdemon leads, darkspawn are predictable, straightforward. Yet these elude even a grey warden. I track the pack through the Collarin forest to the edge of the Black Marsh. The marsh is dangerous, but soon I'll be home, back with Aura. The wardens can take me from her bed, but never her from my heart. The Baroness of the Black Marsh The magic worked! I banished the dragon's essence to the Fade, but the enchantment was imperfect, and the bond between spirit and physical body remained. The beast lay dormant long enough for me to rip her apart and scatter her about the marsh. That should suffice for now. Had the spell failed, I would have perished. What was I thinking, working untried magic on such a powerful beast? Uh, hindsight. So, I saved this soggy cesspit. I don't know what that proves, but these are my lands now, and all lay must not see me as a failure. From the Journal of the Baroness of the Black Marsh. The Architect. The Architect is a powerful darkspawn possessed of an intelligence seldom seen in his kind, and obsessed with Grey Wardens. He seemed to be conducting strange experiments in the old silverite mines near the Wending Wood, although their purpose was impossible to discern. The architect is often seen with a dwarven woman at his side. He treats her with great respect, even affection. No one knows her name, nor has heard her speak. The architect and the mother seem to be at odds. She is undermining his plan, whatever it is. The architect finally revealed his plan as the warden commander was preparing to kill the mother. The architect was born with a mind of his own, able to ignore the call of the old gods. He dreams of freeing all darkspawn from their urge to seek out the old gods, thereby ending the threat of future blights. To awaken other darkspawn, however, he employs a modified version of the joining using the blood of a Grey Warden. He sent the disciple known as the Withered to Vigil's Keep to propose an alliance, but the Wardens misunderstood the Withered's intentions and attacked. The Warden Commander and the Architect agreed that preventing future blights is a noble goal. The Warden Commander pledged that the Architect's work could continue after they killed the Mother together. Let's go kill the Mother! Now the pieces fall into place. The Grey Warden comes, the instrument of the Father. Oh, and the Father, he is but a shadow. Oh, how my children protect me. How they love me. I have told you many times, Mother. I am not the Father. I am simply the Architect. It does not change what you are! You took away that beautiful music, left us with nothing. It was a mistake to free you. It has left you with madness. I am truly sorry.
What's done is done. The mother is a horror, and she must die. Ah, but perhaps the warden would like to hear how it was that the father began the blight. You want the source of the Archdemon? The one who brought all our kind to the surface? Here he is! Well, paint me green and call me a turnip. Ah, there it is then. Unfortunate. I did find the old god, Athemiel, but I did not wish another blight. I attempted my joining ritual. My hope was that this would free all Darkspawn, unravel the curse from its source. Alas, I was unlucky. Uh, I mean, I get the plan. He tried his Grey Warden joining ritual on the Archdemon. That's actually quite clever. What were the repercussions of your actions? It is not the way of the Grey Wardens to do what must be done. In the name of combating the Blight, the Blight is a menace, both for your people and for mine. To end it requires sacrifice and risk. And how lonely the father was. How terrible to be the outcast, the outsider. He claims he wishes the Darkspawn to be free, but what he truly wants is to correct them. However you feel about what I have done, the mother is mad. She cannot be allowed to... Be gone, Shadow. Ready have. And now the hero is alone. Oh, the mother knows your ways. You will not let her be, no, not after what she's done. So it must end. It all must come crashing down. Perhaps we will hear the song again when we die. Oh, let it come. Let it come. Bloody Megan Predator. barely done anything. Oh yeah, I can do these things. Oh, I can do all four of those things. That's good. They'll recharge. these little bloody rats everywhere. What the fuck? Everything's fucking dead. I still can't do anything. I 
was going to go for revival, but obviously there isn't. Oh, oh, oh. Lesser? Why is that even fucking there? Oh, you only got lessers as well. Right, let's concentrate back on the mother then. Very well. Mother's not doing that well, actually. That's probably no. We want to keep some more mana. We can do this. Oh no! After the death of the mother, the remaining Darkspawn forces scattered and fled back into the deep roads. The raids on Amaranthine came to an abrupt end. The architect apparently kept to his word, gathering his remaining disciples to follow the rest of their kind back underground. Those Grey Wardens in other nations were appalled to hear of the architect's continued existence, but were unable to track him down despite years of effort. Some within the Order have claimed that the Architect's survival guarantees another blight, and that the Deep Roads have lately been quieter than any can recall. Most have resignedly decided that it is now in the Maker's hands. Word of the Grey Warden's heroic salvation of Amaranthine spread like wildfire. When the magnitude of the losses at Vigil's Keep came to light, sympathy drove generous donations from all over Ferelden into the region's coffers. Amaranthine was restored to her former glory within a year, Vigil's Keep in five. Because of the Warden's support for law and order in Amaranthine, Constable Aiden and his men were able to distribute the smugglers' goods to the battered survivors in the gruelling days that followed the Darkspawn defeat. The war devastated the farmholds of the Arling, but the land survived. In time, opportunity would attract settlers from other regions, as always. Dirk, one of the pranksters behind the Blight Orphan scam, was fortunate enough to survive the Battle of Amaranthine. The unconditional generosity of the Blight Orphan's mysterious benefactor inspired him to establish a legitimate charity dedicated to children orphaned in the attack. His sweetheart, Melissa, eventually bore him two rascals. Vigil's Keep stood alone against a horde of Darkspawn, the Mother's forces outnumbered the Vigil's defenders many times over. But the sturdy Dwarven walls proved impervious to any boulder an ogre could throw. The Vigil's soldiers, clad in silverite, each felled a dozen darkspawn before they died. The Vigil held one night, then two, then a week, and eventually the attacking horde broke upon her walls. The keep developed an almost mythic reputation, the few survivors immortalised in song and legend. Peace allowed the Wardens to replenish their numbers. Soon, Vigil's Keep bore a capable army, with Wardens at its core. From the ranks emerged new heroes to challenge threats to Amaranthine and all of Ferelden. Through taxes and levies, the Vigil was rebuilt. Years later, Valdric Glavanok stood, stood atop the battlements and pronounced that the defences were acceptable. He would never speak more highly of any human engineering. Dark whispers of conspiracy against the Wardens fell silent after a rash of accidents and disappearances culminated in the apparent suicide of Ban Esmeral. The nobles of Amaranthine remained dutiful, some even suggest they were cowed into submission. Dwarking Glavanak further refined his lyrium sand explosives, but left the Wardens' employ after Canari mercenaries tried to assassinate him. Although the Dwarven Bombardier took his secrets with him, they learned, the learned say he left clues for others to follow in his footsteps. 
the Vigil soldiers wearing the distinctive silver ice armour that Master Wave crafted came to be known as the Silver Order. Under the tutelage of the Wardens, the Silver Order developed into one of Ferelden's most revered military forces. A lasting memory of the Vigil's famous commander. With Valana and the Architect gone from the region, the Pilgrim's path began to see traffic again. The massacre of the militiamen and the merchants, however, led to hostilities between the neighbouring human settlements and any Dalish clans that passed by. One human villager soon kidnapped and murdered a Dalish child. The clans reacted by giving the Wending Wood a wide berth, but both sides know that at some point the elves will return for revenge. A few years after Cal Harol was emptied of Darkspawn, Orzammar began sending expeditions to rediscover the knowledge of smithing that had been lost within the Taig. Eventually House Helmi decided that Cal Harol was too important to be abandoned. At a tremendous cost of dwarven lives, they cleared the tunnels leading to Cal Harol of all Darkspawn, making the road between Orzammar and the fortress safe again. Cal Harol was reclaimed for Orzammar, once and for all. As promised, Voldric and Dworkin presented Orzammar's Shaferit with the stone marker that told of how Cal Harol's Castlis had taken up arms against the Darkspawn. The Commander of the Grey was invited to Orzammar as a guest of honour, at a feat commemorating the defenders of Cal Harol. The Shaper read the names of the Castus off the marker, then presided over a ceremony to return them to the stone, as befitted warriors of their stature. In time, the Arling began to get... In time, the Arling began to forget the tales of apparitions in the Black Marsh, and ever so slowly, settlers drifted into the region. Scholars said the veil was still thin, and thus the area still dangerous, but the people only cared that there were no longer frightened whispers in the shadows. The village was slowly rebuilt. Twice the Baroness's mansion was rebuilt and occupied once by a wealthy merchant, and another, and another time by an Orlesian mage. Both died mysteriously. Afterwards, the mansion was torn down completely, and the site left untouched. The survivors of the siege at Vigil's Keep hailed Anders and his magic for holding back hundreds of the assaulting Darkspawn. In the ensuing victory celebration, the men dragged the mage to the fire to engage him in a drinking contest. Anders lost. Anders remained with the Grey Wardens a few years longer, training the Order's next generation of mages, but when the Circle Tower called on him to deliver a lecture on the nature of the Architect, much to the Templar's dismay, Anders told the Commander of the Grey that his time with the Wardens was over. And yet, not two months later, Anders returned to the Order, even after the Wardens were his home and his lasting companions. Valana never saw her clan again, but neither did she forsake her Dalish culture, nor her sharp tongue, nor her quick temper. After several years in the Grey Wardens, Valana disappeared one day. Most surmise that she left for the Deep Roads to resume the search for her sister, but no one knows for sure. Over the next years, Nathaniel dedicated himself to the Order, and to clearing the blemishes on his family's name. After saving Tern Fergus Cusland from a bandit attack, a portion of Amaranthine was returned to the house. Nathaniel passed the holding to Delilah's son, and when a new castle was eventually built there, a statue of Nathaniel was erected in its courtyard. Justice fought valiantly at the Battle for Vigil's Keep, but before the victory horn sounded, a darkspawn sword removed Christoph's head. It was, of course, unclear whether the spirit of justice perished or simply departed. At the least, Christoph's wife, Aura, was finally able to claim her husband's ashes. Ogren continued to regale young recruits with tales of his prowess in both battle and bed. His drinking games prompted at least one recruit to declare that she'd rather re-attempt the joining than lift another mug. Belsi returned to Vigil's Keep several times to see Ogren, usually bringing their toddler as well. Ogren's inability to act seriously wore on her, however, and her visits dwindled, then stopped altogether. If Ogren missed her, or his child, he never showed it. 
As for the saviour of Ferelden, she did not remain as commander of the Grey for long. The Darkspawn were no longer a real concern, the blight well and truly over. It was time for her to move on. Some claim that the assassin went to Antiva, chasing after the assassin's Evran. One rumour suggested the pair engaged in a terrible showdown in the Antivan capital, and others say they took over the crows. Perhaps they adventure together still. Well, that was okay. It didn't really... It, it felt like it was incomplete. To me. I don't know if the architect returns in Dragon Age 2 or 3. I definitely don't remember him in Dragon Age 2. But it wasn't... it wasn't bad. It was just, it just never really got into the swing of going. It was too bitty all the way through. I mean, there are a couple of dungeons, you know, each of the individual lands worked okay. I just never, never really got into hating the architect or the mother. I guess that was the surprise, is that there were two Darkspawn groups fighting each other, but it just didn't really get paid off in the end. I don't know if it was the same writers as in the normal game, but several of the conversations... I mean, I know that's always the case, and it's always the case in Mass Effect, and it's the case in Dragon Age normally, but several of the conversations were just really weird conversation trees, where you really didn't have an option. And the Keat thing didn't really go anywhere again. It was just like a series of little bits. I don't know if we missed some of them. Probably the same with the characters. I don't know if we really got any payoff with the characters. And I don't know if it's because we missed it and didn't get to do all our quests. And they just kind of came and stayed. They didn't really didn't really have an ending, I guess. That'll probably be my overall review of Dragon Age Awakening. So um, I hope you enjoyed the LP. And one day I'll be back for Dragon Age 2. Which has good points and bad points as well. I think hopefully I can overcome most of the bad points knowing what they are. But that'll be for you to decide. So thank you for watching. And come back for the next LP. A letter from Zevran. Greetings from Antiva. I would prefer to be where you are, my sweet. Antiva is so dull without you to brighten it. Even with the crows trying to hunt me down, this place lacks the excitement of being at your side. Ah, well. I expect my guildmaster will agree to meet me soon. Or maybe I should kill him. What do you think? I hear the Darkspawn have still not gone away. They are like houseguards who overstay their welcome, no? I am saddened you have to deal with such business without me. I must deal with the crows, but when I return to you, not even sharp razors will be able to separate us. Until then, you remain in my dreams, especially the naughty ones. Yours always, Zed.